G'day, fellas, and welcome to a casted game. Spawning in on the right side of the map, we've got the Mister playing in the color blue on the Abyssid Dynasty on the opposite side of the map. Who have we got, Little Core? We got the B coming in as the Chinese here. Haven't really seen Chinese being utilized very frequently in this tournament so far, and I can tell you, it probably fills our hearts with joy that we are seeing Chinese being played not just once today, but already for the second time. Yeah, both you and I are China mains, China players at heart, you know. We often remember the, our first love. For me, it was a particular flavor of paddle pop, which is an ice cream that we've got in Australia. But after that, uh, it was the Chinese civilization. Obviously, I've moved on. I'm now a Delhi fanboy, but, you know, I've still got love in my heart for the Chinese. So it's great to see them picked up here by B and on Lipany of all maps as well, which is a very open map. So a bit curious here. Yeah, there is a lot of things to discuss because B just lost an open map and he decided to double down on it. This is ex the exact same thing that he did against Doubt. So we'll have to see if that works out over here. I'm curious to see what he has on his mind with the Chinese because we discussed this in the first game. He's one of the more out-of-the-box thinkers, one of the more surprising players. So Mister will need to have very, very thorough scouting around the opponent's base if he wants to make sure that he doesn't get surprised by B's uh, potentially unconventional gameplay. And China's always one of those civilizations that you can be taken by surprise with or taken surprise of. Or China has a lot of surprises that it can throw your way just because you've always got so many options with China. Do you throw down a second town center? Do you go for that Song Dynasty? Do you look to go for a couple of stables hidden behind a tree line somewhere? There's a lot of different things that you can do with it. And uh, speaking of doing different things, 3D B going to be capturing a couple of sheep over towards his opponent's base. We see he's managed to pick up three behind here already. Probably going to run into a fourth one up there as well. Compare that over to Mister, who has gone for the one scout opening and has missed them completely. Mister usually goes for one scout opening, so it was a little surprising that we have seen uh, double scouts on Arabia. And on the right side, it's worth mentioning that his two patches of hunt are very close to each other. In fact, so close that certain deer spawn in each other's bodies, and this means that they can't separate. Uh, I think yesterday we had a game where a sheep spawned in the body of a boar, and the same thing was there. They couldn't separate, so they will forever move together. Yeah, I, I just... Look, we're doing this for YouTube as well. It's important that... Um, you know, it, it, you just keep in mind there's a content guideline. Adult content probably should be kept off the site. Um, so I'm just going to... You are the one drawing things on Boulder Bay and just dropping the F-bombs every two minutes, man. <laughs> I'm Australian. I'm legally uh, permitted. I'm culturally permitted to, to say those words whenever I permit. But you know what is not permitted? <laughs> These two deers, they are doing the hanky-panky on my screen right now. I don't know if you see this, but they're moving in ways I've only seen in BBC documentaries. And I'm not talking about the ones they show on English television. One thing I'm a little surprised about <laughs> is that... Uh, I can't believe I just said that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, go ahead. I can't believe I just said that. I'm really sorry. Okay, uh, let's uh, let's let's continue. Uh, I'm going to hope that half of my chat didn't okay. get that joke. All right, it, it, it's, it's time to go back before we get demonetized forever from YouTube. Oh gosh, oh uh. gosh. It's all right. YouTube doesn't individually inspect the fire. It, it doesn't legally... or doesn't individually expect, inspect the videos... It's 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 more of a broad brush they apply. <laughs> yeah. At least so are we hoping. Anyways, Mister is sending villagers out to the stone. That stone mine is a tiny bit exposed, so you probably want to gather that stone before you get your stone mine exposed by the opponents here, especially because Chinese can field a lot of army at the beginning and holy sheeps is that a lot of herdables trailing B. He has managed to bring back eleven sheep. And he has one more right next to that uh, mill and two more carcasses. We've talked about this in the previous set that this map spawns with like 16, 17 sheep and B has the majority of it. His opponent barely has anything to work with and given how exposed those bears are, this could be concerning, especially because that's the barbican of the sun rush. That has to be it. It, it is 100%. He is rushing right now. Look at this. Look how many villagers he's pulling for this. B is actually going insane right now. This is either the biggest misclick that a man has ever done, or he's doing some sort of barbican rush right now. We are seeing it happen live. Oh boy, that's nine villagers. And with the Chinese, you build your landmarks faster. So nine villagers will build a barbican in just a matter of seconds. The question is, what do you tower rush here? Are you tower rushing the berries? the wood line or what, because you can only place it at a, a certain position and that's gonna be right next to the archer range. 
Is there a single archer popping out? The answer is no, and that Barbican will be rushed up in a matter of seconds. Mist is gonna be like, what am I even witnessing? He is rushing everything right now. He's, he doesn't care whether it's the berries. He doesn't care whether it's the wood line, the archery range. He just rushes everything. He is just all eyes right now on everything. I mean, he's probably got only two eyes, but he's looking at everything. B is rushing like a madman. And look at this, dropping down a lumber camp immediately next to this as well. Barbican is out. Barbican is in business. And, uh, and we've got ourselves a game on our hands, ladies and gentlemen, because shit is about to get real. It is about to get real indeed, and you have to relocate your wood line. Mr. does have the stone he needs for a second town center, though, so... Before this game started, Mister was probably thinking about, okay, I'm just going to use my second town center to boom. Now it's more like, okay, I'm just going to relocate my entire base as far away from that Barbican of the Sun as humanly possible. Oh my lord, this is disgusting. So not only does the Chinese build defensive structures faster than all other civilizations, but Bees decided he's going to start building up with six villages on this wood line. That wood line is completely gone. We've got one of the most disgusting tower rushes I have ever seen. Second outpost now going to be coming in as well. Look at the villagers bringing out their daggers. There's no torches involved here. It is just a matter of personal affairs. It looks like we've got ourselves a little bit of downtown Abbey as the daggers come down to stab the backs of the Chinese people in front of them, taking out the first villager. It goes down second one going to uh, go down as well, but unfortunately, uh, it looks like that outpost is going to get up, and now those villages are going to be under significant threat as the uh, the hand cannon slits is actually coming through, and this is dangerous. And on the right side, you also had a tower attempted by B, but with archer numbers increasing for Mista, I think he will be able to repel that. But as you said, this is the most disgusting tower rush you have seen in Age Vampires 4. For any civilization in AoE 4, you always need to have some sort of army that protects those villagers. It's not just villagers being pulled to make towers, but Chinese builds it so fast that you can just pull your villagers and make it happen. And because he's mining stone, he can also make the air hand cannon slits a reality. This is just such a disgusting move from B, but it's also such a spectacular move because really quite unexpected and quite effective so far. Yeah, doing really, really well so far. Uh, managing to get up a third outpost in the base. Now going to be mo moving up towards the fourth base. And we've got ourselves a, a counter wall coming up from the mister. So smart. Now, a lot of people would be looking at this and saying, what the hell are you going to do with a stone wall? This is a very special stone wall. It has got a triple uh, segment in here and now places the stone tower, uh, which is going to be giving him that defensive bonus in this direction. So he knows he can't match the power, the firepower coming out from B here. So as a result, he's going to add this one in hopefully that's going to stop his walls in his tracks and you can see the outpost on the back line it manages to get up i think that's pretty close to being a doubt outpost have a look at that it looks like to me i'm going to do some math here 98 percent getting up unfortunately you need 100 yep indeed you can safely call that a doubt post and you see that mister <laughs> is going to pull the villagers to make sure that that outpost never goes up and in the long run these stone wall establishments will be much sturdier for mista and those have the old spring golden placements on them so they'll be very effective even shooting that those towers out there so i think mista's defense is holding here and oftentimes as we have seen in age vampires 2 where tower rushing is way more common than age vampires 4 the best way to react to this is just send two or three archers to the opponent's base b's entire eco is wide open Two archers might finish the game here. Yeah, this could be massive if he looks for it. Also, we see the battering ram coming down as well. B having a, a lot of, or uh, Mr. Rather, having a lot of trouble uh, in getting any more units out. Just completely camped in uh, by these outposts. And keep in mind, these guys have got the, the hand cannon slits. So these aren't just your normal slits that are doing just hand damage per arrow. These bad boys hit for 25. Do not mess with these guys. And B is coming in with another tower rush on that wood on the right side. Preemptive tower is up for Mista though, so he might be able to stop this one. Indeed, B is going to have to call off this push. And as you said, there is a battering ram coming in. Luckily for Mista, he's Abbasid, so he doesn't need the technology for this one. But he's losing his villagers on the stone mine. He didn't notice those towers shooting at it because his entire map is just one red flashing mass. Yeah, that's exactly right. And have a look right now. We can see Mister sitting on 27 villages, 3 military, 26 villages for B at this point in time. So managing to keep the village accounts relatively even. Horsemen now going to be coming out and looking to try and even things up over in the middle of the map. I don't think B is going to be able to get this 
this outpost up. He looks to get it, and he manages to secure it up with one villager remaining. One villager does go down, and now we've got those hand cannon slits coming in again. Second uh, horseman going to be thrown into the mix, and we do see the second uh, second uh, landmark getting thrown down here for B. He is entering into a dynasty, my friend. We're going into the song. Oh, look at that. B tried to drop a tower on that hilltop and vol it off from the scouts, but that wasn't really a possibility, and he's not going to be able to get that up and with the rams. You're going to start taking down those towers. As you said, Dynasty is on the horizon for B, but B is also getting cleaned up. Is he going to get those walls up, though? Yeah, he's going to get this them up. This is his window. Yeah, yeah. Look, he, he just managed to get these guys through the stealth forest. I'm not sure if you saw this. He managed to sneak a couple of these guys through. <gasps> well, this could be terrible for him. If he goes through the wall again here, he could wall himself in with this horseman. It's on a very low hit points. He needs to get back towards... He takes out the horseman. He heads to the front line. One villager splits off towards the outpost. The second villager splits off towards the wall. He manages to get up all the components of the wall that he needs. He completes completely blocks out his opponent. 3DB makes some big brain moves and he is an absolute mogul in this game. Oh my goodness. I mean, that is such a cheesy play over here. And Mr. Del cannot believe this. I mean, Mr. is doing the right things to respond to this, but just these small things going in the favor of B make it very difficult. That tower is just at a spectacular position. So once again, Mr. is gonna have to call off uh, his lumberjacks away from there although he's slowly reclaiming his side of the base and he's about to take down those towers so i feel like mist is slowly stabilizing and i'm not sure how much juice is left in b's assault here although he's not popping out some horsemen so he will appear on the battlefield with a couple of combat units yeah well i think the important thing to note is that he is actually not gone all in here definitely it looked like a big strategy with bold moves uh, but at the same time, he kept making villages behind this. And not only that, but he's gone for a dynasty, which means, as I like to iterate every time we, I have the opportunity, he's making his villages extra fast today. Uh, oh, so he's chopping through. Oh, no. Look at the southern part. Oh, Mr. no. Mr. preemptively void that section, and now he's chopping through. I don't know what this is, but, oh my goodness, the amount of cheese that we have over here. I mean, any Frenchman would just envy us here with the amount of cheese that we are encountering. It is absolutely disgusting. I don't know about you, but it smells like gorgonzola. It is very potent, very strong, and there are significant amount, amounts of it. Uh, so it, it's, it's going to be incredibly tough. We see that town center was looking to come down here. Uh, the outpost did get spotted out by Mister, and now he has to retreat away from this front. You can see that he's canceled the first town center. Second town center going to get put up here instead. But uh, a fair bit of a mass now beginning to build with regard to the these horsemen as, uh, as players begin to transition towards these cavalry units. Uh, Mr. going to be trying his best to keep up uh, with the uh, appearances that his uh, enemy is putting down. But look at all those attack arrows or all, all those attack circles on the map. Just so many of them around. And now that horsemen are there for B, that ram isn't going to be able to take down those towers. And you know you're in trouble when the opposite player places the second town center at minute 13. And Mr. is struggling for resources as well. He's depleting his berries. The Barbican of the Sun still stands strong. It is being taken down, but the villagers could be pulled to burn down the ramp. And as you said, B is slowly building up the dynasty, and he's building up enough stone stockpiles to potentially think about a second town center even, or just go castle, because his resources aren't looking that bad for that either. Look at the way he continues to push in here with these outposts, just locking down area, locking down regions of the map and preventing his opponent from taking the resources in there. We saw that at the beginning of the game. The Barbican came down. It denied not only the wood line, but also the berries. Then he continued expanding out towards the east. We saw him drop down a second outpost, denying the, uh, the, the wood line. Two more outposts got dropped down towards the gold mine. A third one was denied uh, by the Stonewall Tower, but now we continue to see that growing as once again we've got these stone, uh, or we, we, we've got the uh, arrows or the slits coming through. But in addition to that, we've also got the fortifications for these outposts as well. So he is really looking to hold on to this area and prevent his opponent from coming through. And he snipes the battering ram, making it much more difficult for those horsemen to take down the tower. Remember the previous game, Mr. tried to take down a tower with the horsemen, didn't really work out. And now these towers, as you said, have the hand cannon slits. And you also got the fortification in it. It's all about the delay right now for B. He wants to get that fortification. Look at how majestic that tower looks like. How are you even going to take it down? This bad boy has like 3,000 HP. Yeah, this is a tanky boy right here. You don't want to mess with this, but uh, now it looks like the villagers are going to be trying their best to take it out. At the same time, a couple villagers inside this outpost are going to be preventing 
a significant amount of damage from coming onto this, I suspect. Oh my lord, look at the pool that we've got right now. We've got 35 villagers uh, taking this down. Actually, 30 villagers going to be taking this down. He means serious business when you are talking about... Uh, Talking about tower rushes right here. That is a lot of villagers that are very angry with the Chinese outpost in their base. But look at how much time it takes to take it down. And B is going to be like, okay, whatever, you can have it. I'm just going to build another one behind and fortify it. Archer range now coming out because he's seeing an increased amount of spearmen come in. And Mister is just struggling. I think Mister needs that food patch now with the hunt. And B... He's getting closer and closer to Castle Age. Villager count still that even in this one. And Mister just cannot catch a breath. This is one of the cheesiest games I've ever seen. And I'm going to be honest. I love it. Give it to me all day. This, I, I, I could literally cast this for 24 hours and I would be very, very happy. Second outpost with fortifications now coming up behind the wood line as well. We're going to be able to use this as a great anchor point. We continue to see him pushing forward here. It looks like majority of the villagers on the front line may have been taken down. Actually, there's a single one that remains and you see him coming away now, speeding up to that outpost and sitting down on the ground, tapping away at it. He's going to be researching all of the things that he needs to and uh, now continuing to push in towards the villager line of his opponent, Mr. Definitely getting pressed up against the wall at this point. 46 villagers for Mr. 46 villagers for B. These guys are dead even when it comes to their village accounts. But one thing that's very important for B is that his opponent has his entire eco under pressure, whereas his own eco is just not getting pushed at all. You see, B is just able to move out for a hunt, supervise that, and he's just able to apply so much pressure to Mr.'s eco that Mr. is struggling for resources more and more. He's having trouble with the food income. Whereas for B, I feel like any moment in this game, he could decide to go up to castle. But knowing him, he's a big believer in full feudal aggression. So he might stay in feudal for a long time and just continue to press on. Yeah, can you imagine the difficulty uh, that Mister would have right now if B did manage to make it up to castle and manage to get out a couple of lances? It would be absolutely disgusting. And I don't know if there'd be any way that Mister would be able to hold it. But we'll have to see how he manages to pull this out. A couple of uh, a horsemen heading in towards the wood line here. It looks like Mister's just going to be turning around. And this is really what it comes down to. Like, horsemen are just so laughably weak at this point. Villagers have no problem killing them. Mister is going to be returning back towards his town center. He's going to find it a little bit easier as uh, one village does go down but uh now in a bit of a difficult spot as a uh, golden age was that like golden age one just getting activated right now i think it was yeah because the base of mister is so spread out that he couldn't connect those buildings he just now activated golden age tier one and if you look at b now he's thinking about going up but there is the counter attack horsemen coming in here from mister but as you said <laughs> horsemen are just so laughably weak that villagers with the extra HP will just fight them off here without any problems. Yeah, that, that's exactly it. Like, it, it just becomes, like, it's, it's a joke, honestly. Horsemen are just a joke at, at how little they do. Uh, I, I've talked about this before, but essentially, uh, the chads of the horses are the knights, and these guys are the betas. Uh, they are not particularly strong when it comes to fighting, uh, but they do relatively well against other horsemen. Uh, so that is, I mean, that, that's a, an important point. Meanwhile, talking about those horsemen, we are going to have B moving in as well. And Mista didn't notice this. With so many towers inside his eco, it is just very difficult to spot that new attack notification yes. that comes up. And as you said, the horsemen are so bad, but the Zhukenu are doing a lot of work here. This is one of the things I've ad advocated for for a long time, and we still don't have it, and it kind of annoys me. There needs to be an option to have an independent spectator. I shouldn't be getting ally under attack, under attack, forces under attack all the time. I want to be able to spectate this game. I want to be able to spectate it in peace. And when I've got notifications like this coming up constantly on my minimap, constantly, you know, e everywhere on my screen, it... it ruins the experience for me because I want to be able to enjoy this cheese and I want to be able to whine about it. But unfortunately, I'm just having to whine about the ex the spectator experience. You want to whine about the cheese? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly right, Lydico. Uh, speaking of Song Dynasty, by the way, one thing that we have sort of overlooked so far is that B is now on two town centers, so he's at 65 wheels over 43, and he's got the villages to jump into when there is a counterattack coming in. B is in Song Dynasty, but guess what? Mista could click that button and get up to Castle Age. Yeah, it's very interesting that you, you brought up that point. So we do indeed see Mister now clicking up to the next stage. We'll check in on his landmark, and you can see that he's going with the Culture Wing. So B going to be throwing away his Barbican of the Sun. Uh, Mister going to be looking to get up to the next age, but uh, I definitely think that B is in the driver's seat for this game, uh, despite all the attack notifications going off. Um, but, uh, 
yeah, right now, the double TC is the big play for me. Uh, this is incredibly strong. And it means that uh, he's managed to keep Mr. on the back foot for a sufficient amount of time. And now he's going to race off without him. So basically think I of him... I actually have to disagree. Oh, really? I think B is in trouble because B is in still in Feudal Age. I think he delayed his Castle Age too much. And while there is definitely a lot of towers, Mr. is slowly regaining land over here. And suddenly Mr. is going to have access to those berries that he started with. And if he appears here with Lancers, he could cut into that villager deficit really fast. Yeah, that's an interesting point. The Lancers is definitely, uh, or the Lancers are definitely uh, where things could get serious. Um, the one thing I hope that B manages to do, as he does click up to the third age, going up with the astronomical clock tower, okay, no surprises there. Um, but it would at least look to potentially wall himself in a little bit. He's obviously controlling his enemy uh, a lot towards his side of the base, but needs to look to control his enemy a little bit more towards his own side. It was a nice reaction from B to go up to Castle H. He probably spotted that Mista hasn't really been sending in new forces, so it's likely that Mista is aging to Castle as well. He might have even spotted that little wing being built on that House of Wisdom using the Barbican of the Sun, but now that he's up to Castle H, he's indeed all fine, because he's got the eco lead and he no longer has the technology deficit. In fact, he's able to supervise the stable for Lancer production, so he's now in a commanding position. Mista now reaching the Castle Age. B looking very, very strong at this point, but Mr. going to be trying to even it up. We'll check in with his production and see what he looks to go into, and it's going to be crossbows that he elects to go into, and I think that's a very smart choice to blindly open up with. It's almost guaranteed that your enemy is going to be going into some sort of armored unit immediately upon reaching the castle age, so blindly going into crossbows, it makes a lot of sense. Indeed. And one of the things that happened yesterday uh, is that we had a match with Kaposh versus Lucifron where something similar happened. It wasn't really the cheesy game that we have had here, but Kaposh beat Lucifron into Castle Age by quite a bit, started massing men at arms. And then Lucifron, reaching Castle Age, just went blindly to crossbows and ultimately won the game because um, there was just no deviation from those armored units. Oftentimes, you're just so stuck with your armored units when you're playing any civilization and getting to Castle Age that a crossbows could be a great response. Take a look what we've got happening right now. So B is actually leaving a single unit on each of the relics. Uh, actually, I take it back. He's now moved them away from the relics. Never mind me. Oh no, Mister! He's sending out 10 villagers to the north, attempting a third TC. But there is knights to intercept him. The worst possible time to send those villagers out. He's lucky that uh, B doesn't know about his plans building that TC. So he's only going to lose a couple of villagers over here. Yeah, that, that is very unfortunate timing. Couple crossbows going to be coming out. I got to say, I love the Abbasid crossbows. Look how amazing they look. I wish we could zoom in a little bit further on them, but they're wearing these these awesome looking robes. Knight's going to be coming in, or Lance is going to be coming in, trying their best to, to hit away at the crossbows of their opponents, uh, but uh, not going to have a lot of luck here. Crossbows, unfortunately, don't do particularly well in melee combat, it seems. Not at all. You need something in front because those knights do a ton of damage after a successful charge that one Dao does 25 damage per hit and a horseman won't be able to do much either other than just absorb that first charge from the Lancers. B is still going to play this one safely but being able to supervise that stable he's popping out those knights at a quite rapid pace and he's only using one stable for that. So despite the fact that there is quite a lot of crossbows for Mister to work with, he isn't really able to build up his army because B is just pressing him non-stop. And look at that on the right side. He's going to wall in his opponent. He just wants to limit Mister's movement ability as much as possible. Yeah, very smart move. Uh, I think he really needs to try and control where his opponent's going to going to be able to go uh so i would look to be walling potentially over on this uh, western flank as well look to try and get some walls up over here um and then potentially uh towards the middle of the map as well it's going to be really important to stop your enemy from from moving in uh but it is quite an open area unfortunately between this sacred site and uh and and where the existing uh gate is over there for 3d it looks like b is heading north he, he might actually intercept those villagers and you could ask, how is it possible that he knows about it? It's really simple. You just always probe those berries because the Abbasids want to expand towards the berries. If B just probes that, he's going to be able to find those villagers before the TC goes up. Oh no, it's happening. It is happening. And he spots it. He's now going to be coming in the town center. 2100, 2200 is about to click over. The villagers slowly but steadily getting massacred. This be could be a good game right here. And it, you might not think that, it's, that it is a big victory, but it is a... Uh, it is a mor moral victory, a morale victory right here. This is where the Mr. begins to fall apart. 
And he's held on so long throughout this game. He's held on for 20 minutes with towers in his base, villagers being killed. But now he's gone. He's lost a whole bunch of villagers that were building his town center. This was his third town center. This was his pride and joy. And now it gets really tough for him. He manages to push away the knights. They don't end up killing the town center. And more villagers are going to come out, going to rebuild it. But he's a significant loss for him. And a significant delay because he needed to cut into that villager deficit. Now B is at 111 villagers. And if you look at those resources, that could be Imperial Age soon or that could be Yuan Dynasty. Maybe even Fire Lancers from B. That would be a little surprising against the, the Spearman numbers that are increasing for Mista. But you never know. Just burn through the right side over there, especially against Abbasids, where you only have to snipe down two buildings, the House of Wisdom and the TC. Ah. I, nope, I was I was not. looking at Mister and I'm like, hold on a minute, something's going on here, because uh, he's playing the Chinese. You don't need this much wood, all right. If 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 you want to go out to a gold mine, like he knows where the gold mines are, he can very easily send his villagers out there. He is he's chopping this wood with intent. This isn't poor macro. He's got all the farms that he needs. You can see he's got beautiful farms. If I click on that villager, it's going to tell me he's got 45 farms. Um, so he is saving up that wood for something, and he drops down a whole huge amount right now of uh, archery rangers five to be exact yeah he is going for a juganu which is an intriguing option you don't really see players committing this much to the juganu but it could be a great complement to this army the lancers are powerful and what are you up against you're up against spearmen and you're up against crossbowmen so the juganu will just counter both of those and he's going to have an insane production of that as you said this is why he's so heavy on the wood in fact, he's floating so much resources that he could just flood those out non-stop. Look at that queue being set up. He is at 17 army right now. He's going to be at 60 in just a minute. Yeah, this is going up very, very quickly. And this could get out of hand for Mr. right now, because if we take a look at the scores, B with a huge lead, 2.4k right now for B. Now, typically, I would encourage you not to pay too much attention to the score, but uh, you can pay attention to it right now, because that is starting to look very concerning for Mr. A little bit of a stock take at the moment shows Mr. sitting on 83 villagers, B on 128. So early Alitacor, I mentioned I thought B was in the driver's seat when he, I saw that second TC. And indeed, it seems that is the way. He's doing very well to keep Mr. on his side of the map. And I suspect that he's going to come out victorious in this game. The Shokunu just going to be the final nail in the coffin. And as he said, like, the only hope that Mr. had was that he beats his opponent to Castle. And he's just going to overrun him with Castle units. But that wasn't there because B rushed up his Castle. And one thing to consider is that Mr also hasn't been gathering relics, whereas B did. B also has three relics and the fourth one in the hands of a monk. Now we are seeing some camo riders being added here by Mista, but against the Jugenu, they don't fare well either. You get the feel that Mista is at the brink of collapse in this game. Yeah, it's not looking pretty for him. He's got every single unit out that you probably wouldn't want to make against the Chokunu. He's got spears out. He's got uh, camel riders out. <laughs> He's got crossbows out. But uh, I, I mean, realistically, at this point, he just needs to be getting out a lot of a lot of horsemen. That's the only thing that's really going to be able to take this down. And even then, it's going to be very difficult for them. A couple more villagers coming forward right now. Oh, no. Uh, do we see a forward castle? Indeed, we do. Uh, so B really not finished with his agenda here uh, at uh, adding the or, or taking defensive buildings and then just removing that first word and just calling them buildings uh, and maybe even adding in another word. Offensive, offensive buildings. I don't know about you, but I've been offended and by the way he's played. It's been absolutely brilliant. It was a really good gameplay here. Now, Mister has free mangonels over here, so B has to be very careful because one way to lose a game would be to lose that big mass of Chukenu. But I mean, if you look at B and his resource bank, he could just start selling wood and potentially go up to Imperial, start getting some clock tower bombards going, uh, start getting some hand cannoneers going. That would be a whole lot of options. It looks like he's just going to swoop in on the north, kill a couple of gold miners, Mista slowly building up his villager numbers, but he's just losing so many villagers all over again. Look at what is happening right now for B. B is literally dropping down an outpost on the front line here. And a mangonel is just going to say, uh, excuse me, sir, uh, you are not going to do that. And <laughs> he completely destroys it. That's the first time that B sees the mangonels doing a bit of a split right now. He's looking like a gymnast on a Tuesday. B once again trying to uh, provoke his opponent into an attack without taking too much damage himself. We see those mangonels continuing to fire off into the, the uh, in into the, uh, I guess, what, what's the area that the gymnast performs on? You know that bouncy little thing that they've got? Nope. 
<laughs> but you could just call that gym because that's the reason why he's a gym last. Oh man, it, it's it's not looking. <laughs> that was good. Oh man, that was good. That was good. Uh, but now uh, looks like uh, Lance is going to be trying to move forward, getting pretty decently screened by those spears. Still, we continue to see those mangonels firing off, and finally now it looks like a springle going to be coming out and doing some damage here, focusing down the mangonels. In fact, not really focusing them down, actually just spreading the love out. You can see the first shot went into this mangonel on the top side. Middle mangonel still under a bit of attack, and B trying his best to hold on, getting a bit overrun here. I'm worried a bit for B right now as as uh, Mister continues to make waves. He is going to take down the mangonels now. And the weird thing here is that B took probably the worst possible fight that he could have taken. And he's still in a commanding position because he's taking down the Mangonos. And uh, at this point, as you said, he still has that fourth position to keep. And now you see a lot of stables being dropped. What does that tell you? That tells you that he likes to make buildings. That is true. That is 100% <laughs> true. And that means... You and Dynasty as a possibility. We're seeing Lancers pop out, but one has to wonder if he will start switching to Fire Lancers with that many stables. Ram is knocking on that key, but that's going to be short-lived. Mista is back on track with the Villager count, though. He's at 85, so he's slowly increasing that. And he's got a fairly sizable army as well, but his opponent is at pop cap right now. And he also has multiple sacred sites, so not only relics, but also sacred sites. Yeah, the big thing for Mister right now is no food whatsoever. He is looking absolutely, uh, absolutely... I'm trying to think of what the, the correct term is, but I'm, I'm just like getting famous. Uh, he, he's not looking uh, particularly healthy. Yeah, he's looking <laughs> very hungry right now. Uh, he is expanding up towards the north. There are some berry bushes uh, that are existent up here, but he's yet to expand to these despite playing as the Abbasid dynasty. He's going to be moving back towards his base. He's got a couple of rams that have gone down, but now the push coming in towards his base. A lot of villagers going down, sitting on 88 villagers, 138 for his opponent, and Mr. Taps out. B is victorious comes back and claims the second game in the series between these two titans of Age of Empires. What a game this was, really. One of the cheesiest games that we have seen in a long time. And Mista came into this game with a game plan. He was like, okay, I'm going to play Abbasids. I have a good game plan. He probably was expecting something like French from the opponent or just something of a meta civilization. And then B just pops out that uh, Barbican Rush and... When he was doing that, I was thinking about one thing. Whether or not he's just tilted it because of the first game and he's just going to be like, okay, I'm going to YOLO this set. Because Mista is the favorite of this set. And if B believes he has no chance, we've talked about this, he's going to go full YOLO. And he went and full I YOLO. Was thinking, yeah, I, I was thinking maybe it's like, okay, whatever, I'm just going to try this. Um, and I don't really have hopes of it working. I'm just going to try my best with this crazy strategy. And oftentimes we're seeing these off-meta crazy strats um, push off some very strong players because this is 100% not something that you would have expected. Of course, you can say that, hey, it's a possibility. It's something that could be done on the ladder, but being something that can be done on the ladder doesn't mean that you do it in a big tournament like this and B just pulled off a move like that. Yeah, incredible stuff from B. He played incredible, w incredibly well. Uh, Mr. Definitely taken a little bit by surprise in that one. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you check out the next game in this series. It's going to be coming up right after this one. Uh, but more importantly, make sure you check out Lidacore. I'll leave a link in the description. You can catch more Age of Empires 4 content just like this video. We'll catch you guys in the next one.